Some time ago, I made a video about how there's no equation for a triangle, depending on your definitions of both equation and triangle, because by the end of the video, I had this triangle, which is plotted using that equation. Although the existence of the sine function, which says if a value is positive or negative, upsets some people. But if you allow that as a valid equation, it plots that triangle. If you don't like that, we also have this triangle, which is made using that equation. And now we've got absolute values to try and fudge around using the sine function. You get a bit, you get these spiky bits, the, the, you get rays coming out of the middle. And I rendered both of these using my own uh, ridiculous piping code, which meant that I could also turn on like a spectrum effect to show you how close to the triangle different values are. And that's um, yeah, kind of Pink Floydy, um, good fun. Um, and that was the video. It took 20 minutes last time, could have been a lot quicker in hindsight. However, a lot of you got in touch with better equations for triangles. It's classic you folks. And so I thought it might be kind of fun to do a sequel and uh, at last come up with a good equation for a triangle. It's triangle two, triangle harder. This video made possible by Jane Street. More about the Jane Street triangle later. A reminder that shapes can have equations. So here we have a square and its equation underneath, which is using the absolute value function on, uh, there it is, x, uh, nailed it, and y. And it gives you this fantastic square um, up here. And we can turn something like that into a triangle by adding in just a, a, a touch of extra x and that one absolute value of x extra kind of kind of folds it all down and we end up with a triangle. However, it is only one specific triangle. So individual triangles can have equations, but we want a generalized equation that gives us any triangle we care to plot. And you can start messing around with things like this a little bit. You're like, well, what if I swapped out y for y on b? And now if I adjust b, what it does is it stretches or squashes that original triangle. So if all you want is an isosceles triangle going up and down, no problem. If you want to skew it side to side, you've got to replace things with some trigonomic functions. And now you can start to alter A. So all these A's here, you change them in unison and that will move the whole thing to the side or uh, back over the other way. And you're thinking, well, that's not bad. We're covering a decent number of different triangles, but we want all the triangles. We don't just want ones that you can get to by stretching and, and skewing and these sorts of things. We want a generalized equation and it turns out such a thing is possible. Before the fully generalized triangles, however, I thought I'd show you a few of my favorite close but no triangles. Here is our first triangle, sort of. This was sent in by Muhammad Jafari, and it's a really nice triangle, even better equation. Look at that. Look, that's such a nice, simple equation. X to the power of 2a plus x plus the absolute value of y, and all of that there is to the power of 2a as well equals one, and it gives you, it gives you this triangle. And uh, you know, I'm gonna move it over here, I'll make it a little bigger so we can all, oops, too big, too big, back a bit, there it is. And what I can do is I can turn on uh, a dot here, and I can label it. So it's evaluating that equation at whatever point this dot is, it's displaying the value you get from that equation. And this only displays if it equals one, and it currently doesn't, it's very much not one, it's a huge number. And if I drag it around out here, it's just some massive number. If I move it inside the triangle, it's a tiny number. That's now 10 to the negative 17, 10 to the negative 56, tiny. But if I put it right on the line, that's where it equals one, there, one. And then likewise over here, it equals one right on the line. So it's only coloring in the pixels, there it is, one. Where that equation gives you one, it fills in that triangle. And you're like, well, what's, what's wrong with that? Well, hang on, let's just, I'm just gonna zoom in a little here where it crosses the axis and <laughs> look at that. What is that? Come on. There's like a little, there's a dip. You don't wanna, you want this to be straight, not having a dip. So it turns out it looks like a triangle. If you zoom all the way out, not actually, in fact, the corners, zoom in on that corner, isn't that lovely? It's like, it's a triangle, but it was in a hurry. It's like, I got places to be. Uh, but we want a more crisp. 
corner than that. And you can kind of fix it by increasing that value of A. So, oops, <laughs> let's try and fix that. There we go. So if I put the value of A uh, up, it becomes more and more triangly and um, hard to tell at this level of resolution. I'll turn off the dot. And in the extreme value, like I guess as A approaches uh, infinity, this will approach a triangle. If you go the other way, you can see just how not triangle it is. So if I come right down here, uh, it starts to exaggerate the dip, exaggerates the corner, uh, and becomes a lot more kind of, look at that, it's, it's like a heart. It's a, it's a triangle heart. Uh, yeah. Next almost triangle. Uh, this one's actually quite nice. It's uh, straight lines, it's got corners, everything you could dream of. And the equation is uh, quite pretty. Let me just drag it out, there you are. Uh, it's using the sine function again, a whole bunch of things equals zero. Uh, it's nice. Nice and tidy. It's, it's a slight variation on the things I was doing before, and the person who made this triangle wants to remain anonymous. That's mysterious. So I'm going to refer to them as Generic Viewer. Thank you very much, Generic Viewer, for this triangle. Um, you can mess around with all the values here, so I can make move the sides up and down, move bits around. Uh, all, uh, all the various values in the equations can be um, adjusted. And the reason why it's not an actual triangle is because we just want the lines. If you turn on the dot with a value for this one, you can see it is indeed zero everywhere outside, but if I move it inside that little triangle, it becomes eight. And outside is zero, and inside is eight. So actually there's two regions, the zero region and the eight region, and this line, it doesn't actually exist mathematically, it's just, it's highlighting where the regions change. So strictly speaking, this is not the outline of a triangle that we want, because a polygon is made of a straight of line segments, basically. It's uh, the filled in version of the triangle. Th this is to a triangle what a disc is to a circle, which is still lovely, nice equation, looks great. Not technically a triangle, but good work, generic viewer. You're my favorite. Now for a quick roundup of perfectly valid triangles, but not generalizable, uh, starting with this one here. So this, uh, look at me, I'm in the triangle. Ah. Uh, this was sent in by someone uh, called Harrison, and I thought I'd put it in as kind of an honorable mention because it's made using 3D planes. It's a 2D uh, slice of 3D intersecting planes, which is just ridiculous, but amazing. Up next, this triangle, which you think, well, okay, it's a perfectly good triangle. It's not, uh, not a bad equation. Look at that. It's got, some, it's got an arctan and a tan. There and back again. Great. But that slider for n equals 3, what if we move that up to 4? It's a square, it's a pentagon, it's a hexagon. It makes uh, regular n-gons by adjusting n in that equation. And there is actually more of that equation, so I'm gonna... <laughs> there's all of... Wait, there's more, there's more, and more. That's it there. So, wow. Okay, so all of that... Uh, okay, it's now real small, but it, it, th this which I appreciate is now bigger than the shape. You change N in that, and it gives you all the different regular N-gons. That's so, so pleasing. Uh, that was sent in by someone with username, Idiotinium, Idiotinium. Generic viewer number two. Another one here, this was sent in by Jaden, as well as a few other people on, uh, on TikTok. Are they, these TikTokers from TikTok? Look at the reach we've got now. People love triangles, what can I say? Uh, good equation. Again, arctan action, bit of a mod. Uh, not quite as complicated as last time. Uh, sure enough, we can, we can vary this around and we get all, look at that, it's so good. So good. Uh, all the different regular n-gons by varying n in that equation, which I love immensely. Finally, thanks to Tristan, we get this amazing triangle here, which is very similar to the other ones. I can vary n to get uh, different regular n-gons. Very, very cool, they get bigger. It's kind of fun, there you go. It's like, it's like I'm zooming into it, Wah! and back, there we go. You know, I've not messed with C, what does C do? Oh, it's just the size. Excellent, good to have that as an option. There you are, I could just made it bigger and smaller that way. Uh, now, there's one downside and one upside to what Tristan has done here. The uh, downside is, technically it includes the origin. So this spot here, right in the middle where that zero is, that is actually part of the shape according to this equation, don't get me wrong. Lovely equation, it's got a big cow capital pi. So the capital pi, that's like the product version of summation. So that means you, from k equals zero up to n, you are multiply, you evaluate that each time and then you multiply them all together. Um, and that gives you the shape, which is kind of fun. But it does mean if I turn on the dot 
here. Uh, it's undefined outside the shape. You go inside the shape and it's defined, and then right on the crossover it's zero. So technically we're coloring in all the points where it's zero, but if you put that in the origin it goes zero again. So you can see I'm, I'm a little bit off. But technically right in the center there, yeah, it gets super small. Uh, it's actually zero right on the origin. So downside, you get all these cool shapes, you can zoom them in and out, but it does have that one annoying dot technically right in the very middle uh, of the plot right there. Uh, the upside to what Tristan has done, however, is this uh, whole separate plot. I mean, look at this! Look at this little person! Uh, I'm, I'm gonna name them Generic Viewer. Excellent. This is what I think of you all uh, as, as a stick figure. However, um, now I have actually not played with this before. Um, a, a friend of mine, Sam Hartburn, went through and double checked all the things that everyone said and there were so many and uh, she came up with a short list uh, of all the good ones and she says you've got to see this other plot that Tristan's made and I've saved it to have a look at it now. If I vary H here, what? <laughs> it's walking! <laughs> look at that. It's so good. Uh, that's the most ridiculous and I've seen a lot of plots in my life. That is the most ridiculous plot I've ever seen. The rest of the video is just this. Enough ridiculous plots, we now have to find equations for generalized triangles and we're going to do that using the triangle right from the start. And we're going to start with a triangle from before because lots of people sent me that equation. When I said there's no equation for a triangle, they're like, well, that's a triangle, that's this equation. And I think this may be the most simple equation for a triangle, but like I said before, it's for one very specific triangle. In this case, well, obviously you can scale it up and down, very similar, classic triangle, but its coordinates are 0, 1 for the top one up there, and 0 on the x-axis, 1 on the y vertical. You've also got positive 1, negative 1 to give us that corner down there, and then you've got negative 1, negative 1 to give us that corner over there. But what if we want to move those three corners to three new arbitrary locations? Now we've just got, this is like x1, x2, x3, can we move them to these new points? Now there's a very long Reddit thread that I will link to below about this equation and that triangle. And people say, well, why don't you just use an affine transformation? And that's great, because that's a transformation that preserves straight lines, good for things staying as a triangle, but doesn't care about angles. Angles are not preserved, which is great, because we want a different triangle. So all we have to do is find a transformation to go from our starting triangle to any arbitrary new location. And to do that, we're going to use a matrix. Oh, here we go. Literally right in front of me. There you are. Check out these matrices, right? So there's our original coordinates that we're starting with, and we want to move them to these new arbitrary coordinates. And to do that, we've got a matrix transformation, T. There it is. We've got to solve for T. And um, that's, that's doable. So first of all, uh, right, okay, check these out. Okay, so uh, that bottom one, that's the determinant of the new arbitrary matrix over there. And then this is the rest of the equation. So you take all of these and now we've switched this to be like a big X, big Y's. You take all of that, you plug it in there and magically it will move your starting triangle to any new, look at that, any new arbitrary locator. Oh, so, so pleasing. I'm, I'm uh, beside, beside the triangle with excitement. I based that explanation of the matrix transformation on some working out emailed to me by Anson Mansfield. So huge thanks to them for sending it in. All mistakes and miscommunications are my own. And they were far from the only person who got in touch. I also received an email from Graham Goebel and he sent me a whole different way of working it out. And it starts once again with three linear equations. My equations from before actually started with this same idea where you have three generalized linear equations and then you have to combine them somehow such that they only give a value of zero if you're on the middle bit of the triangle, not these sticky out bits that technically carry on infinitely far uh, in every direction that they're going. And I did that with uh, either using the sign or absolute value to tell which side of these lines you're on. What Graham did is he thought, hang on a second, You've got uh, several different definitions of the center of a triangle, one of which is if you pick a point right at the middle that then has a circle around that point which goes through every single vertex. And that technically gives us two regions of space on our plot. We've got the outside region, everything out here that we don't want, and we've got just the triangle in the middle. So if we have a way of basically getting rid of the outside of the circle, that would give us an equation for a triangle. 
And what Graham did was work out a function based on the equation of that circle, make it a bit more ridiculously complicated, but this will not return a value outside the circle. It's undefined, but it will return a value inside the circle. So you are taking square roots and you've got negative things going on. And so this was Graham's great insight to give a function which is only defined where the triangle exists, but it's not defined outside the triangle. So then the rest of it is what we did before. You just rearrange linear equations, multiply them all together. So you only get a value of zero if you're on one of the three lines inside the defined region. Uh, and it doesn't matter, this gives you one because you're going to be multiplying it by a zero over here. And that works a treat. So well done, Graham. I really like that, the equation that Graham's come up with here. The only issue is that the exact vertices are on that circle. So technically, Technically, the vertices are not captured by this equation, but all of the edges are. And the edges go right up to the infinitely small vertices. So uh, even though the vertices are technically points with no length and no size, uh, they're not there. I mean, so you're missing something infinitely small, which some would say, does that really count? I think it does. For the next generalized triangle, we're going back to Desmos. Another Desmos? Another triangle, and this is a classic where you've got the three different equations for your, your linear functions, and you just kind of piece just the bits you need together to get the triangle. And you can actually edit those, so I, I can increase that. Instead of being a one, it's now, I don't know, a three. Oh, too big. I regret that immensely. And I accidentally added another row. Let's get rid of that. Look at that, that's too, too much triangle. I think we can all agree. In fact, I don't want to add anything. There it is, perfect. Love it, tiny, tiny little uh, pocket-sized triangle. There you are. And you're thinking, well, how do you how do you combine these three equations to give you a single triangle? Well, there's there's the function. It's right there. I think I think that's all of it. Is there? Is there? Oh no! Look at it all. It just keeps going. Look. At it. Is there more? There's more. When does it? It. Oh, it's ended. Oh my goodness. It's too much. It's too much. So uh, it's it's all of this. So what do we got here? You add each of the functions to its absolute value, and you multiply those all together, and then you separately add on the functions while subtracting the absolute values of the functions. And oh my goodness, it basically means, it's again, it's another way of defining which side of each line you're on, positive or negative, depending on if something is equal to its absolute value or not. And so it narrows you down um, to give you those. And so yeah, it, I think it might be arguably, it, it's exactly the same concept as what I did in my first video, but arguably, uh, you know, despite being terrifyingly long, I think you could argue that's a nicer way to go about that same concept. Now there's only one last triangle to have a look at. Finally, we have this tweet from Inigo Achilles, who uh, has made a moving triangle that matches my original ridiculous matum generated animated triangle and they put the cool spectrum on with the magenta and the cyan and it moves around it's so great and technically uh yeah it's an equation they just kind of show it like all the kind of workings is spread out but it's doing exactly the same thing as before it's working out how far away a point is from the closest side of the triangle and then doing the coloring and everything else accordingly. I think that's really nice. It turns out it is not any goes first rodeo when it comes to graphics like this because, uh, well, let's just say we're gonna ignore Desmos for a while and have a look at Shader Toy. Here it is, uh, all of Inigo's original code on Shader Toy. I have a link to this below, fantastic website, and you can see it animating around again. And uh, not only is this a great website where you can show cool animations like this, but actually Inigo was the person who founded this website. They founded Shader Toy, such a great website. And so not only have they got triangles, they've also got a bunch of other shapes as well. Here are all the 2D ones done in the same style. Rounded boxes, uh, orientated box, segments, rhombi, parallelogram. Look at all these, look at these crazy things, amazing. And that's just 2D. Here are the 3D. All of these 3D shapes are rendered using equations. So it's how far things are away, it's so good. Let's have a look at, you know what, I'm an arbitrary capped cylinder exact. That's that's, look at it. Oh, I've never seen a cylinder so capped. Uh, and you can see all the code that it takes uh, to, to make that. It's uh, so nice. So I'll link to it below. Do check out Shader Toy.
I'd like to quickly thank the sponsor of this video. It's my good friends at Jane Street, which is why I'm in the Jane Street Triangle, which is made up of New York, London, and Hong Kong. And fun fact, I was the first speaker to visit all three of those offices and talk to the Jane Street staff and interns. So there you go, because Jane Street, they solve complex mathematical problems in the financial world, which means they're my kind of people. And if you're into maths and computing, and you've watched a video about equations of triangles, then you are also the Jane Street kind of person. They're always looking for mathematicians and programmers they can hire, and they offer some fantastic paid internships and courses for young people who are considering a job in that industry. So do check out the website below if you want to go along uh, to one of their courses, internships, apply for a job there, and you may even see me, because uh, you've got all these three different places, so many places around the world. I was in the Hong Kong one recently. Not gonna lie, most of the interns I saw there were from Australia. What are you going to do? And actually, they were in Hong Kong for their internship, but they were about to go to the New York office for a while. It's a fantastic company that exists all around the world. And uh, fun fact, I was the first person to visit every single office twice. I need to do three times, then we'll have a Jane Street tetrahedron. It's pretty exciting. Anyway, huge thanks to Jane Street for making these videos possible. And now I'm going to hand you back out to regular Matt, who will probably, I don't know, thank you for watching the video or something, honestly. He hasn't even got a beard. That's it. Thank you so much for watching the video. A huge thanks to everyone who sent in a triangle equation or equation for some kind of plot. There were so many, just an overwhelming number of them sent in and I appreciated each and every single one of them. All of you, you're all, you're all generic viewer to me. Thank you so much for making these videos possible. And we're gonna finish uh, with the walking stick figure. Partly because I just wanna see them walk. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, a bunch more, but also we didn't look at the whole equation. Let's drag that out, shall we? So there's, there's the, it's not too bad. There's the, oh my goodness, a lot of flaws. Wait, I can't go any, I've got to scroll. Can I scroll? I can't even, how do I see the rest of the equation? Oh, don't hold out. Oh, here we go. I can push across to the side. So that's gonna, ah, oh. how much can there be? If there's more than 20 seconds. We're gonna run out of a uh, end card on this video. I mean, don't forget to like and subscribe, I guess. Place your bets on when this equation will end. Oh my goodness.